your contract was coming up, um, you're at the racetrack, get back to your trailer, and uh, your wife Amy says to you, Rick, um, you know, wants to see you on his uh, bus. Take me into that room when you walked in to discuss contracts and what you said. I, um, I'd been feeling some of the concussion symptoms, but I didn't really know that. It was still before I had went to see the doctor, but I'm for like two weeks, I'm having some vision blurry, blurry vision at distance and very um, short fuse, you know, sh really snappy. Uh, I go into Rick's bus and we sit down and he's like, I need to start talking about, you know, what we're gonna do. We're gonna, I wanna renew the contract before even the media starts asking us questions about it. And I was like, you know what, Rick, I've been thinking about it. I'm not sure I wanna keep driving. I don't, I don't know whether I wanna race or not. I'm not having any fun and I'm, you know, I just go on and on and on about the frustrations of. And you were getting pretty riled up too, yeah, right? Yeah, so I don't remember yelling about all this, uh, but Rick is in his interview for our book recalls me being very animated and, and loud, you know, <laughs> and so I didn't give him an, uh, you know, an answer and, and I hadn't had my mind made up on what I was going to do when I left. I mean, I just went in there and pretty much just unloaded all my anxiety and frustrations and walked out. And then a week later, I was in the hospital getting looked at. It was after a race at California Speedway um, that you call him and tell him you want to meet with just him. Yeah. Uh, take me into that room and what was said. I said, I want to, I want to talk. And he came to my house, sat on the couch and I said, Hey, I made a decision. I don't want to, I don't want to run after 2017. I want to, I finish our contract that we have and I want to be done. I wanted to go back to the well one more time and race in 17 and hopefully get through that healthy and then just say, all right, you know, let's not push our luck and keep on getting hurt. And what is this doing to me long term? You know, if I keep on keeping on hitting the fence and, and having these little episodes over and over and over, is it is this really something I'm gonna regret terribly when I'm 60, 50 even? And so, you know, it was hard because he's like, I want you, I want you to I love racing, working with you. I love you being part of my company and part of my team. And that made me feel great to hear that. But he also was like, hey, man, you know, you, uh, uh, that, isn't, that is all secondary to our relationship as friends. And, and you mean too much to me uh, for you to be compromised. And I want you to do what you think is best for you and take care of yourself. So it's your last race before the race. He comes up and yeah. grabs you by the neck, giving you a big hug. The only time I ever cried during the whole retirement mess was when Rick was around. Why? I didn't want to disappoint him. He was like a father to me. He was like a dad. You know, I don't say that casually. We're here today to confirm uh, the news you received this morning that I've decided to make this season my last as a NASCAR Cup driver. Why was it relief that you felt after the retirement announcement? I was just glad to be out of the car and out of the crashing. No more head banging and getting hurt and getting sick. How much did it drive you crazy that there are some like uninformed folks in the media that are like, oh, he's retiring because, because of Amy, of Amy. or Amy's mm -hmm. making him retire? A lot of that was not surprising. I think it was just an easy target. I'm an easy target for something like that. Without a lot of information, too, they're just going to assume. And it was ironic timing, considering he was going to come and come, coming to the end of his career anyway. And we were getting married. I just got pregnant. It was just kind of all cumulative and easy. It didn't bother me. I, I, I felt like I've developed a, a thick skin, but it's just easy to see that that was just an easy target. So it didn't bother me too bad. And plus, I stayed off of social media when we were really going through the really bad parts of it, mm -hmm. um, just because he and I both didn't want to see what everybody was saying. Your sponsor, Mountain Dew, owned by PepsiCo, I was talking to their uh, marketing VP, Tedesco. Adam Harder, oh. and um, oh. he was telling me how before you made the retirement announcement, you called him up and gave him a heads up as to what was going on, and he said it was unexpected, 
so classy and <laughs> meant the world to him. Wow. Um, why was that important to you? Well, I think that when you have such, when you have partners like, like Mountain Dew and, and, and Nationwide, and those people put so much into that investment, they put so much effort and, and man hours and time into that investment. I think that's the right thing to do to let them know they can't find out about this decision from someone else or some other way. You know, they're a big reason why you're able to compete is to have the support from those sponsors. So, What's your perspective on why he wrote the book? Well, I think there's a few reasons. I think he wrote the book because he wanted to share his perspective and really share everything he went through. Um, when he was going through it, he kept a lot to himself, not just like the notes that he kept from everyone, but he kept a lot of the real dirty grind of what he was going through from the media and from his fans. So I think he wanted to make sure that they knew what he went through and why he was really retiring. And then I think he wanted to make sure that if in sharing the story, he could possibly help someone else going through something similar. Um, That's important to him. It's really important to him. I think that drove him sharing it more than just because of his race fans and wanting to put closure to that. 